Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. This is important topic, very frequently asked in your theory and very frequently even in your oral exam and you may be given a case in which you will have to examine cranial nerves. So today we are going to discuss regarding the fifth cranial nerve or we call trigeminal nerve. How you examine and what are the findings if you get the damage to the trigeminal nerve. So we know very well trigeminal means three division. So there are three division we call ophthalmic division, maxillary division, mandibular division. So that makes trigeminal nerve. We'll be discussing under anatomy, functions, method of testing and interpretation of damage at different levels. So if we see there are trigeminal will arise from brainstem. It has got two portion, sensory portion, motor portion. There is a motor nucleus which is present in the pons. From there you will get a fiber which will run along with trigeminal nerve, trigeminal ganglia and then those motor fiber will run along with mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. While in a sensory nucleus we have got three nucleus. One nucleus which is in the upper part of the midbrain. So it is in the midbrain. You have got main sensory nucleus which is in the center part. And then we have got one nucleus which is running down into medulla. So it will be receiving the fiber from different parts and it will be responsible for specific sensation. So this is a big sensory nucleus. And it receives sensation from half of the face in front of ear pina and half of the face. The upper part of the face will be by ophthalmic division. The middle part of the face will be by maxillary division. And lower part of the face by mandibular division. We are not going into how it comes out and what are the different branches etc. We are not going to discuss in detail regarding those. So we will be going through one by one. So we have got mandibular division which will come out through foramen oval. We have got maxillary division which will come out to foramen rotundum. This is foramen rotundum. This is foramen oval. And ophthalmic nerve will pass through superior orbital fissure. And then it will supply sensory. So this will be the three division. This is principal sensory nucleus. This is spinal nucleus. And this is called mesencephalic nucleus. <clears throat> so you have got three division, supraorbital, or uh, we call ophthalmic division, maxillary division, mandibular division. And you will have a motor fiber from motor nucleus, which will be running along with maxillary division and will supply the muscles of mastication. So that will be the motor division. Plus there are fibers which will be supplying. We call lacrimal gland. We will be showing you separately that. So this particular motor fiber will be supplying muscles of mastication plus tensor tympani and tensor valley palati. So this too will be the extra muscle which it will be supplying. Tensor tympani will make the movement of the tympanic membrane and it will help in acuity of hearing. While tensor palati play a very ma minor role in movement of the soft palate. The main principal nucleus, which is we call sensory nucleus, is responsible for touch and proprioceptive sensation. While spinal nucleus is for touch, pain, temperature, pressure and proprioceptive sensation. While mesencephalic nucleus is for pain and temperature. So this will be the different sensation which will be going to this spinal nucleus. 
then fiber from that will ascend up will cross to the opposite side and will end in thalamus ventro posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus and from thalamus thalamocortical fiber will end into opposite side post central gyrus that is sensory area of parietal lobe this will be the division so we have got ophthalmic division maxillary division mandibular division and we'll be going through that this will be this v1 is ophthalmic this is v2 that is maxillary and this v3 is mandibular and you can see that behind this this will be supplied by cervical roots that is c1 c2 c3 that will be the way so cranial nerve will take origin from pons sensory fiber will be going towards pons while motor fiber will be leaving the pons and it will be running along with mandibular division and so ophthalmic is pure sensory and it supplies upper part of the face maxillary is again pure sensory which supplies the middle part of the face and mandibular is got sensory plus motor and motor will be supplying muscles of mastications ophthalmic will come out from superior or superior orbital fissure maxillary from foramen rotundum and mandibular from foramen oval if you want to remember it is called sro so that will be the way you can remember so function is sensory supply to the anterior part of the face as it supplies conjunctiva it takes part in corneal and conjunctival reflexes so it is a sensory pathway for corneal and conjunctival reflexes because this also supplies cornea and conjunctiva and it is also supplying through the motor division along with mandibular division to all the muscles of mastications so sensory supply plus corneal reflex then sensory supply and secretomotor fibers too also lacrimal gland so it is also one of the function of trigeminal nerve and motor supply to masseter temporalis medial and lateral pterygoids and that is muscles of mastication we'll be going through that so ophthalmic division upper part of the face corneal reflex maxillary division lacrimal gland and middle part of the face and mandibular division muscles of mastication plus lower half of the face lower part of the face over the mandibular region so this will be sensory this will be ophthalmic this will be maxillary this will be mandibular as far as muscle sub mastication temporalis muscle masseter medial and lateral pterygoids while other muscles that is tensor belly palatalis mylohyoid anterior belly of digastric and tensor tympani now individual muscles this temporalis and masseter muscle will help to close the jaw so lower jaw is lifted and it will close the jaw so closing of the jaw will be done by temporalis and masseter muscle clenching of the teeth while medial and lateral pterygoid will take part in opening and side to side movement of jaw and that will help in mastication so all together this will take part in closure this will take part in opening plus side to side movements while tensor palatine will be helping to just pull up the soft palate mylohyoid and anterior belly of digastric will take part in uplifting the floor of the mouth and that will help in swallowing reflex and tensor tympani will move the tympanic membrane into an increase the acuity of hearing so this will be the together effect and this muscle sub mastications and motor fiber to all this different muscle other four muscle is via what we call is a motor fibers which runs along with 
mandibular division and that is motor function so mandibular division has got sensory plus this all motor function so ophthalmic division for skin supply or sensory supply to the upper part of the face plus lacrimal gland and upper eyelid and cornea so it will take part in corneal and conjunctival reflex while maxillary division lower eyelid conjunctiva then nasal cavity then upper lip and upper part of the teeth and cheek etc while mandibular division lower lip tongue lower part of the jaw lower part of the face ear and even salivary gland parasympathetic fiber all muscles of mastication except buccinator which is by seventh cranial now so this is sensory supply ophthalmic division maxillary division mandibular division so among sensory it also gives some branches to meninges we call meningeal branches it supplies medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid tensor tympani tensor palati then anterior divisions will be giving branch to masseter muscle temporal nerve and then now to lateral pterygoid and even to the buccal cavity sensory supply and posterior division auricular temporal that is little amount of uh, sensory supply behind the ear then you got a lingual branch inferior alveolary and mylohyoid nerve this is little amount of in detail now we have got mandibular division has got different branches called we call lingual branch which will provide the sensation to the anterior two third of the tongue and this particular because it is also getting corda tympani a branch of seventh cranial nerve and that will be supplying anterior two third of the tongue buccal branch will be innervating the mucosa on the inner side of the mouth and lower part of the jaw auricular temporal will be innervating external auditory canal and portion of the external surface of the tympanic membrane inferior alveolary branch will innervate the lower part of the teeth and gums and it will also supply chin and lower lip also it will supply mylohyoid muscle and anterior belly of digastric and this two muscle will help to uplift the floor of the mouth and that will be helping in swallowing reflex and it also gives nerves to masseter muscle temporalis muscle medial and lateral pterygoid tensor palati and tensor tympani already i have mentioned the function of those muscle so masseter is for closer of the jaw and slight protrusion temporalis is closer of the jaw and little retraction so masseter is for protruding and closer while temporalis is retraction and closer but this two action that is protrusion and retraction is very minor the medial pterygoid is for closer of the jaw with protrusion means almost like we call masseter muscle that is medial pterygoid closing and protruding while lateral pterygoid is for opening and protrusion so together it will take part in opening and closing and protrusion so all together protrusion retraction closing and opening so it takes part in mastications when pterygoid of one side contracts it will pull the mandib mandible to the contralateral side that is the reason why on one side of the pterygoid paralysis say if the person has got mandibular damage on the right side so jaw will be pull to the opposite side so that is the action 
so jaw will deviate towards the side of weak muscle so when the pterygoid is contracting to one side it will pull the mandi mandible contralaterally so motor root also supplies mylohyoid anterior belly of digastric tensor belly palati and tensor tympani so how we taste will be showing you that this is what we call as now supply to via mandibular division this is sensory this is motor fibers this is motor fiber this is sensory this is maxillary division this is ophthalmic division this is mandibular division and these are three nucleus main sensory nucleus mesencephalic nucleus and spinal nucleus so main sensory spinal mesencephalic nucleus and we are not interested in different ganglia etc so trigeminal nerve comes out anteriorly it will enter the cavernous sinus in the cavernous sinus there is a trigeminal ganglia and then it will divide into three division that is ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular ophthalmic will pass through the superior orbital fissure maxillary will pass through the foramen oval and mandibular to foramen rotundum function motor function muscles of mastication swallowing movement of palate and tensor tympani for acuity of hearing as far as sensory is concerned entire half of the face in front of ear pinna three division ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular and anterior two third of the tongue taste sensation but this is because the cauda tympani branch along with mandibular division it will supply anterior two third of the tongue taste sensation taste fibers and as far as reflexes is concerned when we try to elicit the jaw jerk the sensory pathway is fifth cranial nerve from masseter tendon to pons so center is pons and from pons we get a motor fiber which supplies masseter muscle and you get a closure of the jaw corneal and conjunctival reflex sensory pathway is fifth cranial nerve center is again pons and motor pathway is seventh cranial nerve we call orbicular is ocular so among sensory will be tasting with different materials like for touch sensation cotton wool then you can taste with pain that is pain sensation vibration sensation pressure etc but you will have to taste in three different compartment that is ophthalmic division maxillary division and mandibular division and you will have to compare right with left and while testing you will have to ask the person to close and person is supposed to identify what type of sensation and where it is where you have been stimulated plus corneal reflex can be elicited as far as motor is concerned will be asking the person to clench the teeth open and close the mouth and side to side movements and during a jaw jerk will be showing you that in a normal person usually the jaw jerk is very difficult to elicit but if bilateral upper motor neuron palsy particularly in a pseudo bulbar palsy you will have jaw jerk exaggerated brisk because of increased tone in the masseter muscle so these are the different divisions and these are the different structure which are being supplied we have already mentioned before ophthalmic division cornea skin of the forehead scalp eyelids nose mucous membrane of paranasal sinuses nasal cavity etc while maxillary skin over the face that is particularly maxillary division upper lip upper part of the jaw 
part of the nasal cavity maxillary sinus soft palate etc then mandibular division particularly skin of the cheek part skin over the mandible side of the head lower part of the jaw tm joints mucous membrane of mouth and anterior two third of the tongue taste sensation so while tasting you can taste with temperature pain touch touch with cotton you can use a pointed instrument but it should be a proper point and you can use a test tube containing hot or cold water or you can have an instrument on one side there is a hot temperature and on one side there is a cold temperature so you can use that particular different methods by which you can do temperature pain touch and you can even with tuning fork you can do the vibration identification and localization above the upper eyelid ophthalmic division between the lower eyelid and upper lip maxillary division and below the lower lip and over the jaw mandibular division and posterior part of the ear pinna that is posterior auricular nerve and anterior two third of the tongue you can do taste sensation so by touching in a different area this is touch this is sharp point so this is pain this is again pain this is temperature this is pain this is again temperature this is pain so you can do that particular test in all the three different areas and compare right with left then interpretation is now suppose if the person has got some sensory loss over one division then it is a partial lesion of at the level of ganglia or after the ganglia but if the person has got complete loss of sensation on half of the face it has to be proximal to ganglia or in the pons touch only lost then pontine lesion affecting the sensory nucleus pain and temperature lost is very frequently seen in a syringobulbia so this two condition you should remember so in syringo mylia which is affecting the brain stem the word utilized is syringobulbia and that will affect the center part of the brain stem and that will affect the pain and temperature sensation while if only touch is lost it is mainly because of a sensory nucleus so you try to identify that muscles of mastication if they are affected means mandibular division is affected or main nerve is affected or there may be damage in the pons if swallowing is affected that is myelohyoid and anterior belly digastric is damaged that can be damaged if only those two are affected it will be more peripheral tensor palatae so there will be slight descent of the palate and tensor tympani if the person has got hearing disturbances affecting the lower tone it is tensor tympani which is being affected so you will have to do this particular test and for muscles of mastication we ask the person to close and open the jaw so closing and opening of the jaw close the jaw tightly that is masseter and temporalis and side to side movement is by pterygoids if person while opening or closing so while opening if the jaw deviates to one unilateral side it will be one side trigeminal gogon means if the person opens the jaw and if the jaw is deviating to say right side it is a right side pterygoid is damaged because it is an opposed action of opposite side pterygoid particularly lateral pterygoid and that is the very easy way so if person is asked to open the jaw and jaw deviates to the right side means right side trigeminal damage then to look at the anterior belly of digastric as well as tensor myelohyoid myelohyoid muscle you ask the person to swallow so these are the two muscle will be taking part in lifting up the floor of the mouth 
So if they are affected, it will be in again damage to the same side. Tense a pellet eye. You ask the person to cough or open the mouth and look at the movement. And in tensor tympani, you can go for audiometry and find out the hearing disturbances. This is pain in V1 division. This is pain sensation in V2 division. This is pain sensation in V3 division. And this is asking a person to close the or clench the teeth and open and close the mouth. You will be testing for masseter. And when you are asking the person to open the jaw and you oppose, that will be the muscle, particularly lateral pterygoid. Lateral pterygoid is for opening. We have already shown you before. And for closer, medial pterygoid, masseter, and temporalis, three muscles. And also simultaneously protrusion is done by those three muscles and retraction. Retraction is done by pterygoid. So while testing for the muscles of mastication, ask the person to bite a thin paper and try to find out the resistance given by masseter and temporalis. Then ask to protrude the mandible against the resistance. Open and close the mandible against the resistance and you try to find out. And then you can go for jaw jerk. As far as superficial reflex is concerned, you can elicit, this is corneal reflex. And when you touch the conjunctiva, it is a conjunctival reflex. Sensory pathway is fifth cranial now, motor pathway is seventh cranial now. So if that is absent, maybe because of, say if you are touching the cornea on the right side, this is right eye. And if the left eye blinks and right eye doesn't blink, means it is seventh cranial now. But if you touch to the right cornea and both eye does not blink, means most commonly it is a fifth cranial nerve. Sensation, sensory supply to conjunctiva and cornea is being affected. So that will be very simple. This is a jaw jerk. In a normal person, it is difficult to elicit. You ask the person to open the jaw partially, put the thumb in the center and give the jerk so that you stretch the masseter muscle. Response is closer of the jaw. In a normal person, it is difficult to elicit. But if it is easily elicitable, we call brisk. It is classical only in one condition that is bilateral upper motor neuron palsy. And that we call is a pseudobulbar palsy. This is corneal reflex. This is conjunctival reflex. Again, this is corneal. This you can elicit conjunctival reflex always is use cotton don't use sharp instrument this is corneal so corneal and conjunctival reflex we have already mentioned what are the roots which cranial nerves how to elicit what will be the response we already mentioned so this will be corneal now this is for masseter muscle this is jaw jerk and this is again corneal reflex with a week of cotton. Never use sharp instrument. This is eliciting a jaw jerk. In a normal person, difficult to elicit. Closer of the jaw due to contraction of masseter muscle. But very, very difficult in a normal person. But if it is easily elicitable, it is more because of brisk reflex in pseudobulbar palsy. All the functions are normal, means trigeminal nerve is normal. All functions are affected on one side. You have got damage of fifth cranial nerve in the pons or just outside the pons up to ganglia. If some functions are affected, damage has to be in the trigeminal ganglia or in the branches. So we have already mentioned all those. If corneal reflex is absent, ophthalmic division is affected. If palatal reflex is affected, maxillary branch is damaged. And if muscles of mastication is affected, mandibular branch is affected. So you can roughly utilize that particular 
loss of corneal and conjunctival reflex, ophthalmic and maxillary division, muscles of mastication, mandibular division, anterior two third of the tongue, mandibular division, and depending upon the sensory loss over the face, you can put them into that separate lesions. You can identify. If you have got the spinal tract being affected, mainly it will be pain and temperature. And if there is an corneal reflex being affected, it is more by ophthalmic division than mandibular division. Most common cause of the damage to the trigeminal nerve or trigeminal ganglia, mainly in the pons by vascular damage, that is thrombosis, embolism, hemorrhage. And it will be mainly by basilar artery and the branches of basilar artery. Outside the pons, there will be a damage because of the tumor, meningeal lesions, neuropathy, acoustic neuroma, that is acranial now, neuroma. Inside the pons, serigomyelia and multiple sclerosis again giving a damage in the pons. Anterior two third of the tongue, if you want to test, you have to explain the person how you are going to do. In an amber color bottle, you will take the solution of coffee, tea, rose, sugar, salt, peppermint oil, then uh, chocolate, etc. The commonest taste. But don't take strong taste, which will hamper the taste sensation. So usually commonest taste like tea, coffee, rose water, sugar, salt, peppermint oil, etc. Strong taste like chili, then white pepper, uh, black pepper, clove, etc. should not be tasted. You have to ask the person first to rinse the oral cavity, protrude out the tongue, you hold the tongue with the gauze, you dip up one stick in a solution which you want to taste, touch one side of the tongue, anterior two-third of the part, anterior two-third of the tongue on one side. Person is not supposed to speak. Person is supposed to write down or identify by the name put on the table. Then again, same thing is repeated. Rinse the oral cavity again. Protrude the tongue. You hold the tongue and you do the taste with another solution. You have to compare right with left. So protrusion of the tongue and holding the tongue, rinsing the oral cavity, this procedure has to be repeated. At one time, one solution is tested. You repeat with the another after rinsing again. And you have to compare right with left. If the taste sensation is affected, it indicates the damage to either mandibular division or corda tympani branch. And by and large, the commonest taste which is being done is sweet, salt, as far as possible, don't use a strong smell or a strong taste sensation. So those materials should not be utilized. These are the area where the different distribution of taste sensation. This is bitter solution. It is, it is in the posterior part of the tongue, which is by glossopharyngeal. While anterior two-third of the tongue, mainly by the quadra tympani branch, but it supplies to the anterior two-third of the tongue along with mandibular division. It runs along with the mandibular division and then it supplies. Sour taste is here. This is salt and sweet is on the tip of the tongue. So this is a distribution. So depending upon where there is a loss, you can also say which sensation is being affected. There are some drugs which can alter the taste sensation. So you should be aware of so those drugs. Say I'll give a very simple example, metronidazole groups. All metronidazole groups, metronidazole, tinidazole, ornidazole, secnidazole, all that will have constant bitter tense, metallic ten, taste sensation in the oral cavity. So it can disturb your taste sensation. You can have damage to that taste sensation because of cerebrovascular disorders, carotid artery, thalamic lesion, tumor compressing at CP angle, multiple sclerosis, etc. 
also you can have disturbances in this condition also like head injury bell's palsy polyneuropathy epilepsy post surgical dementia etc this may be helpful sometime in localizing the lesions cauda tympana injury can also produce damage to taste sensation this is the worst condition which you can come across that is a necrotizing lesion affecting the oral mucosa nasal cavity etc so this is the taste sensation from anterior to third of the tongue this is the taste sensation from posterior one third of the tongue and that will be by glossopharyngeal and vagus and anterior to third facial via cauda tympani branch just a pathway we are not going in detail so i end my lecture here again thank you very much for taking out time i know that your time is valuable and i appreciate that you have spent some of the time with me for listening this lecture if you feel this lecture is helpful to you please don't forget to press button like it will be definitely helpful to you in your everyday practice as well as in your oral exam and sometime this can be asked in your theory also if you feel that it is beneficial to you you can share with your friends also and don't forget to press button like and subscribe and don't forget to even press bell icon see you in next lecture